Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together a compilation video of 16 of my best spring DIYs and I hope you enjoy. Let's get started with our first spring DIY. We're going to use all these materials to make a spring sign. So the first thing we're going to start with is one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. I um, have trouble finding them sometimes, so I just bought a whole case of them off the website and picked it up at the store. Easy peasy, and they're so versatile. So first we're just gonna take the hanger off, and then I found this beautiful fabric at Dollar Tree. It's like a light aqua color with these like salmon colored uh, flowers all over, and this is exactly the kind of color scheme I wanna go with today for these spring DIYs. So. I just want to cover the wood round with this beautiful fabric. So to do that, I am just going to lay this down on the back of the fabric. I'm not going to iron it or anything like that. Um, I think it'll be okay. And I'm just going to go around. I'm just going to use a yellow Sharpie just to kind of give me an outline of where to cut that out. Just holding that still. And I thought we could just Mod Podge the fabric onto it. It's gonna give us a beautiful floral background. And then I wanna use one of those little wood watering can signs from the Dollar Tree to make something really cute for spring. And you know, here in Florida, it's kinda of hard to know the seasons, but I am still ready for spring. <laughs> Summer is my favorite, I think. Even though winter is nice, cause no bugs, right? So I cut that out and just laying that on top. Might be a little big just because I didn't iron it, um, but we can always trim it up later. But it looks good. It looks like it's gonna cover like the entire wood round. So I'm just gonna take some Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree and we are just going to attach it. Now, when I do fabric, I probably do like a thicker layer of Mod Podge than um, when I'm doing like paper or something like that. I really want it to attach the fabric. I don't want this going anywhere. And I'm gonna be building on the sign, so I do two pretty good coats of Mod Podge. And then just lay that on there, just flattening it out. I'm not gonna Mod Podge or anything on top. I like that fabric texture, but I'm just gonna use a paper towel to like smooth that out kind of soaking that into the material. And then I do have a little excess fabric here around the edges and I'm just gonna trim that off just as close to the edges as I can get with my fabric scissors. And we have a really pretty a background going on this sign. Now I didn't wanna leave like the rough like fabric edges around there. I wanted to frame that out in some way. So I thought, you know, I could probably do like a rope frame because the rope would kind of go with the like spring garden look that we're going with today. So I'm gonna use like this thinner, like the brown rope. And we're just gonna make just a super easy, a brown rope frame around the edges of this. I kind of like the fact that it makes the sign look a little bit thicker too. I'm not a big fan of the thin signs. So I'm just gonna start like, Probably in the center of the bottom. I kind of know where the hanger is on that, so I know what's top. And I'm just gonna do a thin bead of hot glue and just attach that to the sign. I'm working on a silicone mat, so I don't have to worry about the hot glue sticking to that. If you're not, you're probably gonna wanna pick it up and kind of like sit it on the side, but this is gonna give me a really nice clean edge here to my fabric. I love these signs. I do um, two of the watering um, can signs today and I just love how they turned out. They were so much fun to put together. So working all the way around to the bottom and gluing that off. It looks pretty good. Um, I like to kind of seal my two ends together, um, kind of make it less of a seam there if you can. And then I always like to burn the fuzzies off my rope just to clean it up a little bit. And I just do that with a lighter. 
just burning all the fuzzies off. Now the last thing I need to do to prepare this is to poke holes through the fabric. So just using one of those little Cricut weeders from the Dollar Tree, I'm just gonna go in from the back and just poke holes in here and we can make a new hanger. I thought we could incorporate some of these cute white um, wood beads from the Dollar Tree. I love that they're carrying those now. And then just some of the Dollar Tree thin twine. I like to go in through the back and tie off in the front. I find that the Dollar Tree signs like hang flatter against my wall like that. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm not gonna bead the entire thing. I just wanted a few beads. So I'm gonna do like two white beads like on each side of the hanger. So a total of four, just to give a little fun to the hanger. I'm not a big fan of the hangers that they come with. Um, because again, I don't think it hangs very flat with the little, um, thing on it on the back. <laughs> okay. So this is the little watering can sign that I want to attach to that. It fits on there perfectly. It definitely fits inside like the rope border. And I love that background. Now, since I want to do like that turquoise color and salmon color, I am going to do the water can in the salmon color. This is just an acrylic paint that I had. I did find that this sign was a little difficult to paint because I had to use a brush to get down in all between all of like the letters and the flowers. And you don't want to get too much paint because it like pools around the letters. I did have to go in with a smaller brush too to kind of get in between all those letters, but I finally got it painted. <laughs> and then I want to kind of stain all of the raised wood on there. So I'm just doing that with some antique wax by Waverly and a little makeup sponge and just dragging that over. If I get any on the watering can, that's fine because I can just use that to distress it. I want the watering can to look old and used. I thought about staining the whole watering can in this color and kind of making it look like a rusty watering can, but I really wanted to use some fun springy colors today. That's why I went with the salmon color. So I'm just going over the flowers and the letters, trying to give that stained wood background. At first, I thought about like leaving it just like that, but then I thought it wasn't real, um, the details weren't really being brought out and I thought it was a little hard to read. So I'm just distressing it with just a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and some ivory acrylic paint to try to bring out some details, kind of going over it with a baby wipe as well, and just distressing the watering can too. I love that distressed look. And this is what it looks like so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the watering can to our beautiful background there, just by using some hot glue on the back and laying that down. I found that it attached pretty well, even though you are doing it on a fabric service, I got that fabric down pretty good. Now I wanna cover that little hole there on the top. And so I'm just going to take some of that twine from the Dollar Tree and just do a very simple little bow. This is always my trick to cover those holes. I think it adds a cute little detail and it's easier than trying to fill them with spackle and sand and all that kind of stuff. So just trying to get it sized appropriately. Just want a little tiny bow. And it's always better than leaving those holes unfilled. That drives me crazy. Now I got to this point and I was pretty happy with it, but I thought that it was a little hard to read. So I started distressing it more with some ivory to try to brighten it up. And I do like that more. I guess you could paint all of it white um, and then distress it. I'm kind of going in the reverse direction by staining it and then making it white. But I did have to go over it a couple of times to brighten that up. I do like that wood stain coming through, but I just thought it was not very bright and that it was kind of hard to read with the wood. So it's gonna be mostly ivory. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go over all of that, you know, letting some of that shine through for sure. And I think that really brightened it up and I was much happier with it, with the bright white compared to just the brown wood. 
Okay, I think this one is ready to go. Our little Life is Beautiful watering can. Look how beautiful that fabric is behind it. I just love it. And I love the color of the watering can. I think it's so pretty. I really love the spring crafting items they have available at the Dollar Tree this year. They're really cute. So this is another one that I got. It says, Welcome to My Garden. I think I saw a total of three different kinds at the Dollar Tree. And for this one, I found this fabric at the Dollar Tree. It's like a salmon and ivory like stripe. It's not a floral. I kind of wanted another floral that would match my color scheme. But when you're working with Dollar Tree fabric, it's kind of what you can find. So I'm just gonna use this and then I'll try to bring in the flowers later on my watering can. So again, I am just using my yellow Sharpie to draw that out. I love using uh, this craft fabric from the Dollar Tree. I also buy like the white polyester and use sublimation to make my own fabric, which is great. Which reminds me, I haven't done sublimation in a long time. I really need to do that sometime soon. And thank you guys for voting on my video. I wasn't sure what to craft next. I still had a lot of supplies left for Valentine's Day, but it was getting kind of close. So I was afraid to do another one of the videos and you guys all voted for a spring DIY video. So here we are. <laughs> so I got that cut to size. I'm gonna do the same exact thing that we did before. Just doing a nice thick coat of Mod Podge. And then laying that fabric on, I'm gonna have like the stripes go vertical, trying to keep them as straight as I can, but covering all of the wood board. And then just rubbing that in with just a paper towel. I find that works good, otherwise your fingers could have a little glue on there and they might get stuck. And again, I'm just gonna trim off any excess fabric that I have. If you wanted to iron your fabric first, you could probably get a closer cut the first time, but we had lots of DIYs to get knocked out today. So I'm gonna do this same rope border as well. So I'm gonna use that same package of rope that we used earlier, and we are just going to glue on a rope frame. I thought for this sign, we would do like contrasting colors. So the other one had like an aqua flower background with a, salmon color watering can. So this one's gonna have the salmon color background and we're gonna do like a turquoise color watering can, which you guys know I love my blue colors. They go with all my beachy decor and it goes really nicely for any holiday. I think I always use it. So that looks pretty good. I got it all glued down and I'm just gonna go around and burn off the fuzzies. Now, as before, we're just gonna need to poke some holes back in here. So the easiest way to do that is just through the back with one of those little Cricut tools. And I'm gonna make the same exact hanger just to kind of make it go together. I can hang these signs together as a set. One of these would be really cute for your front door as well. And maybe even for your back door, if you did have a garden in, in the back, and just feeding that through after stringing some of those beads on there. I've got those beads like from the Dollar Tree, like in white, black, natural, like stained. They're really coming out with a lot of variety. So that is my little watering can. This one was a little bowed compared to the other one. So make sure that you get a flat one. And I don't know how hard it would be to pop off the flowers and the writing on these. In the past, I've had trouble um, and sometimes you destroy it. So that's why I left it on there and just painted it all. And this one I was going over with turquoise. I got to here and I was like, I think this is like a little brighter than I wanted to go. So I do add some ivory to it, tone it down just a little bit. Um, this one, I found the flowers weren't as, as attached down, glued down as the first sign. But again, I kind of wish they would make these as a kit where you could like paint them separately and then glue, glue it together yourself. I guess it would be harder for them to sell that way, but it would be nice because this was just as challenging to paint as the first one, trying to get paint in between all of the letters and the flowers, but at the same time, not letting like the paint like pool up by using too much. 
So that's why I just go in with a small brush and try to get that all clean looking. Now I told you I wanted to bring flowers in on my watering can because I didn't have any for my fabric. So I found these great rub-on um, stickers, I guess they're called, from the Dollar Tree. And the colors are really pretty. There's like a salmon color, lots of blues, and I thought this would look really nice on my watering can. And so I'm just gonna start picking them out. I was kind of, um, my preference was for ones that had like that pink color in there. I thought that would be a nice contrast against the turquoise sign. And we're just gonna bring the flowers in on the watering can. Now, this does take a minute, cause you know, you have to cut out the little piece, stick it on there, scrape it on. If you start pulling off the backing and it's not all transferred, just lay it back down, scrape it some more. I find the end of this little Cricut tool from the Dollar Tree works really good. Sometimes you can get lucky and just like your fingernail can be good enough, but sometimes you have to scrape them quite a bit. So I'm just trying to find, you know, pieces that are the right colors. They're gonna fit. I'm even going to decorate like the handle, pretty much all of the watering can. Kind of give it like a, you know, beautiful like wallpaper floral like appearance. And this did take a while. I think this took me about 15 minutes to decorate this whole thing. So I have it like way sped up for you because it was definitely time consuming, but it was fun at the same time. So that looks pretty cool. I'm digging it. Now I'm going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to stain all of the top wood pieces with some antique wax by Waverly, just dragging that over with a makeup sponge and using any that gets on there just to kind of distress it, that's fine. At this point, I was going to leave it with this like wood with like just distressed in ivory, but after I got both of them done, that's when I decided that I really wanted the flowers and the, especially the words to be more white because I did find that they were much easier to read in white than in the wood. I kind of wanted to kind of leave it the wood, but it just did not work quite like I had imagined. So uh, that looks pretty good. We got that stain. You have to get that pretty dry when you're painting with that. And then I'm just going over with my ivory and distressing everything. And if you do too much, don't worry. If you have like a baby wipe, I love to use baby wipes with crafting. You can always go over and get off any of the excess paint. I was really trying to bring out that detail, especially in the flowers and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to our little striped sign. I'm using lots of hot glue. This one was the one that was a little bit bowed, but I found that if I held it down tightly with that hot glue, it did straighten it out with the addition of the sign that we're gluing it to. So again, it has a little hole in the top of the little watering um, can sign. So I'm just gonna do a very simple bow out of twine and just glue that over it. Now I am gonna go back and paint this ivory as well. I got both of these done and then I was like, I asked my husband, I'm like, are these hard to read? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, well, they look better white. He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll make them more white. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go over and distress it a lot. And I do like it better white. What do you guys think? So I think that looks really pretty and springy. And I love these colors together. The salmon and that light turquoise color. I think it's so pretty and looks so springy to me. And I love those little flower transfers. I think they turned out really pretty. And this is how it turned out. Cute little welcome to my garden. I love it, I love spring, it's so fun. Okay, our next DIY, I found this little watering can from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could decorate it, make it into like a floral arrangement. Now it's like kind of a funky shape cause it's one of the plastic watering um, cans. If you had like a real metal one or a thrift flip, 
that would be even prettier. But since it's plastic, I want to kind of decorate it and distress it to try to make it look a little prettier. So the first thing I'm going to use are these little gold butterfly decals from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could kind of just decorate all over. You know, a lot of times watering cans, you know, are made out of like tin. So I thought that metallic look would be pretty. I could bring that in with the butterflies and it's going to make them look super springy. And then I found several kinds of flowers from the Dollar Tree in that like salmon color. I think they're going to look really pretty. They're going to go with my pink and blue color scheme we've got going on. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the whole package of these butterflies. No need to have any butterflies like laying around afterwards. Just kind of moving them around in a random pattern. And I don't have enough to go all over, but I do have enough to do like the front and both sides, even a little, even some on the handle. Now, I don't want them to be super glossy, and I found that um, the plastic already looks kind of glossy because it's plastic. So kind of want to like distress it, hide the fact that it is plastic. So that's why I'm going to go over the entire thing with Matte Mod Podge. It also kind of tones down like the iridescence of these like gold foil butterflies. I want them to be shiny, but only so much. And I like that this kind of gives like a texture that it's painted, it's gonna make it look way much like less like plastic when it has like a textured finish. So I do go over with two coats because it, it was still looking kind of shiny. And again, I'm using the matte Mod Podge to kind of tone that down a little bit. That also helps to seal all of those decals on there as well. And this is how it's looking. I did want to, I thought it looked a little too perfect, so I'm gonna distress it as well. Just because I like to distress thing, kind of goes with the coastal vibe in my house. But, you know, this step is totally optional for you. I distressed it pretty heavy going over with a baby wipe. But be very careful if you're going to use Matte Mod Podge first because you don't want to take that off. So you don't want to rub too hard. But I'm going to heavily distress it. I just kind of wanted to make it look old and less like plastic and then i thought this would be a perfect vase to fill with those pink flowers for spring and i'm going to go ahead and distress the back as well even though i didn't put any butterflies back there just for a little bit of uniformity now the only thing i didn't really like about it is that since it is plastic it is very lightweight so i did want to weigh it down because i don't want this like tipping over so I'm just going to use some rocks. I have some of the white rocks from the Dollar Tree, but, you know, you can use whatever you've got. Get creative. <laughs> and I'm going to fill that up. The great thing about this is that after I'm done with this, I can use this as a watering can. Very functional. And on top of the rocks, I'm just going to cut some pieces of floral foam. So I can kind of stand the flowers up there. That way we can do like an arrangement. Now I found a couple different kinds of flowers. I found two packages of these flowers. Beautiful. Um, they're kind of a smaller flower compared to the other one that I have there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of separate all of those, that two packages of those and kind of scatter those all over. And in the middle we can put these, but I do want to save one of these flowers for another DIY that we're gonna do today. So I'm just going to steal one before I forget. And then we'll just use the rest for this flower arrangement. Now I'm just using my floral scissors from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to start cutting these apart. I like to cut them apart because I find it easier to arrange. And I'm seeing if my foam is tall enough. It's not quite. So I'm just going to put a couple more pieces in there to make that a little taller. Not gluing them down or anything, because again, I want to be able to use this in the future. And then I'm just going to start scattering these all around the edges. I thought about like mixing up like different colors, like maybe some white flowers in there, but I really liked just this beautiful like salmon pink color that it was really pretty and it's a really nice contrast against the blue watering can. So once I get those all in there, I'm just going to go ahead and use the rest. 
I want them to be a little bit taller though, so I am just gonna shove the whole thing in there all together. And this is how it turned out, our little watering can vase full of flowers for spring. Super easy, super whimsical. This would be great indoor or outdoors on your porch for spring. And the fact that I weighed it down, it's gonna be a little bit more stable, so you don't have to worry about it blowing over constantly if it's outside. That was really fun. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I always have a link posted below. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I also have a Facebook page where I post a lot of my Facebook reels. Okay, let's get back to spring crafting. Check out this beautiful sign that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's almost perfect. Look how thick it is. I was really impressed with how thick this is because you know that's always my biggest gripe about Dollar Tree signs. Now, it looks like there's supposed to be like three boards and it is cut out that way, but it's not like actually three slats of boards. So I thought we could make it look a little bit more like three slats of boards just by cutting it. Not all the way through, just a little bit. So I'm just using one of those squares from the Dollar Tree and a razor blade and just following the ruler, cutting a straight line between the boards. Then I thought I could sand it up, rough it up a little bit. Whenever I use like a paper covered sign like this, I do like to rough it up a little bit. I think it makes it look a little bit more hand painted. Now I didn't think you could really see that scene very well. So I went back over it with like that Cricut weeder tool to kind of carve that out a little bit deeper. And I think that looks really cool. I like the fact that it looks like separate boards now. And this is the flower that we saved from the flower arrangement. I thought it would be so pretty to attach this sign because it's very similar to what's in the picture. I just need to drill a hole. Um, I'm just using a screw just because I didn't have my drill handy. So I just need a hole, but I don't want like a very big hole. I just want it big enough for that stem of that flower to go in there. That way I can leave the stem on there and the flower won't fall apart because I found with Dollar Tree signs, if you take that backing off, the whole flower falls apart. So just using my weeding tool to try to make that hole a little bit bigger. I just want it to be the perfect size so it'll grip against that and just slide that flower in. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And it totally matches the colors. I am just gonna use a dot of hot glue on the back just to make sure it stays put, even though I think it probably will. Now, the only thing I have left to do on this sign because it's so cute to start with is I wanted to replace the hanger. So I'm gonna use some of these wood beads um, from the Dollar Tree. Um, these have little rainbows on them. Mine has like rainbow colored ones, white ones, black ones, um, and the painted ones. And so I am just gonna use one end. I'm gonna cut that tassel off because I wanna save that for sure. And then we'll just replace what's already here. Now they had it stapled on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that off with some pliers. And then I'm just gonna staple my would-be garland on there just by tying a knot and stapling that down. Now they had stapled it down, and so I thought, this is a thick sign, I can staple it down. Now my staples may have been a little bit bigger than theirs because I did have like one end of the staple kind of poke through a little bit, but we're gonna work with it. I'm gonna make it about the same size as our old hanger. And I'll definitely have to save that little rainbow on the end of that for St. Patrick's Day. Now, don't worry if you voted for something other than spring. I have tons of St. Patrick's Day, Easter, spring, even some coastal. I know there's people in there asking for coastal. And um, it's all coming. You know, you know, I spoil you with lots of videos. So I just tied a knot and stapled that one to the back as well. And I think this is so pretty for spring. And how easy was that? Basically just cutting the boards, attaching a flower and replacing the hanger. And I love how those white wood beads tie into the white beads, the wood beads that we added to the first two signs. And Dollar Tree is really up in their game with these signs. I think the sign is really beautiful. Now the next DIY, I picked up a couple of these. I got like the shovel and the rake and I thought we could DIY those into a fun little wall hanging. I think they had like three different things. I can't remember what the other one was. Maybe like a different kind of rake, not sure. 
I thought they were too busy though, so we're gonna pop off these cute little things that are on there, and I will definitely save those for another project. There was the sunflower, the ladybug, the bee, the flower. Now I'm also gonna pop off the words. The little bugs and stuff were super easy to pop off. I'm just using a Cricut tool and my heat gun, but the words were on there. So I don't think they'll be reusable, but I got to a point where I was just trying to get them off. And that gives me a nice blank canvas, canvas to work with. I want these to be colorful, but I don't, I want them to be simple. I don't want all of this extra um, decor on there. And all of these are gonna be great for future projects. I am planning some bee projects. And I'm really excited about that. I haven't done bees in a couple of years. Since my bee tear tray video two years ago when I very first started on YouTube. This is the one I kind of really destroyed. And I was like, eh, I'm not gonna use this again. Okay. So I'm just gonna use heat to try to clean that up. I wanna try to get off any glue residue that's on there. And then I thought we could repaint these to kind of go with our color scheme today and kind of hang them together in a cute little spring wall hanging. So I just use a combination of heat and sandpaper just to clean those up a little bit. This one wasn't as bad. I didn't really have as much glue residue left on that one. Now it's just time to paint them. I thought I would make this one that salmon color just because the other one was blue and I thought that'd be really easy to make blue again. So it is gonna require a couple coats of the salmon color because I'm trying to mask over that green color that was on there before. And I'm just going to um, paint the shovel part, the salmon color, and then I'll go back and paint the handles a different color. Now for the rake, we're gonna do that aqua color. So I'm mixing turquoise and ivory together to give me that same light shade that we used on the watering can sign. And that one was easier to paint blue to blue, so it only required one coat. Now I thought about leaving like the natural wood on the handles, but I haven't really used any natural wood in my DIYs today. So I'm just gonna use ivory because I've used that a lot more and distressing the wood with the ivory acrylic, also distressing the shovel part, just to kind of give it that distressed look. And if some of the wood on the handle shows through, I'm totally fine with that. It just makes it look a little distressed. We're gonna do the same exact thing over here on the little rake by distressing the handle ivory and then distressing the other with the ivory too. Super cute. I love how simple they look compared to how they looked before. And then I was trying to decide which one I wanted on top. I kind of like the shovel better on top. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach them together with a little hot glue up here, down here, the two contact spots to kind of hang them together. And you could get all three, but I thought two was definitely enough for this project, so I only picked up two. Now I kind of wanted them to look like they are tied together. So I'm gonna use some of this wired burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And instead of actually tying them together, I'm just going to wrap it around first and then we'll make a bow and add on there. Easier than trying to tie this wired ribbon. So I'm just gonna hot glue that on. And you're kind of working at a weird angle, just kind of do your best. And I'm gonna glue that down. And you don't have to worry about your hot glue showing or anything like that. We're gonna have that all covered up with a bow that we're gonna make out of that same burlap ribbon. So this is really easy because the Fabric is the same on both sides, so I'm just going to pinch, make two loops, right? One on each side, try to keep them equal distance, and then cut a second tail. Then using a zip tie, we're just gonna cinch it together. Easy peasy, just trying to keep my like loops the same a size before I tighten it too much, and then pull my tails down. Trimming off the excess zip tie. And we can attach that to our little burlap that we put up there to make them look like they're tied together. And I'm just gonna glue that down with some hot glue. Now to kind of make that bow look a little bit prettier, I am going to 
Um, dovetail the ends. Just making sure that is secure and not going to go anywhere. You can see the zip tie in the middle, so I will put something there. Um, decorative to kind of cover that up. But I'm just going to fold these and then dovetail them about the same length. Now I was trying to decide if I should put like a flower. I thought about these foam roses from Valentine's Day, but then I ended up going with one of the little solo wood roses from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I thought that'd be really cute on there. And it's kind of the perfect size. I was trying to decide, should I paint it? Should I not? I decided not. I like the natural wood. So I'm just gonna glue that on there. I don't want that falling off, so the glue, I kind of had to use a lot and kind of really get it in there, kind of pushing down. I added a little glue to the top to make sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere. Now, I probably should have done the hanger for this before I got to this point, but I got to this point and I'm like, I need some way to hang this. This would be cute, though, if you wanted to sit it on your table as well, lean it up against something. But I'm going to make mine hanging by taking some twine, just doing a little knot that I can attach to the back of this sign, I guess. And I'm going to staple it on there. I have the wood like doubled up and I have the bow there so you won't be able to see the staple if it does go through. And I'm just going to staple above of the knot and I always miss the first try. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> And we have our little shovel and rake wall hanging. I thought about adding some words to it, but I really love just the soft spring colors of this. And I kind of like the simplicity. So this is how it turned out, our little garden tools for spring. I'm really digging those colors together for spring. I think I'll be using those colors together a lot. Now I wanted to make a tear tray. I have one of these little seagrass like tear trays from the dollar spot at Target. Super little, but I thought we could decorate it with some fun spring garden supplies. So I got these little garden gloves at the Dollar Tree and they're just perfect. They're that beautiful like aqua blue color. They have like the pink flowers all over. And I'm just going to like kind of leave them together like that. Just take the package off and lay them on my little tear tray. This is just a little tiny tear tray, but it's super fun to decorate with some fun spring DIYs. Next up is a little frog that I got at the Dollar Tree. He's super cute. And I thought we could decorate him up a little bit. He's something that you might find in a spring garden, but I want him to look like he's like poking his little head out of a flower. Now I didn't have any more of those like salmon color flowers, but I did have some of these pink roses left over from Valentine's Day. So I thought we could make it work. So I'm just gonna take that apart using some of the big petals. We're just gonna start hot gluing those around the little frog face. I thought this would be a really fun way to bring in a flower to the tear tray and a frog because he's super cute. They have these in all different positions, like laying on their backs. Um, this one looks like he's like getting ready to hop. But I'm just gluing each petal around and you could do this with any flower you've got. Maybe a little petal would look even better. And I'm just going to keep going around until his face is completely like surrounded by flower petals. And it is a little bit pinker than I was going with. And you will see that I am going to update the color a little bit. But for now, this is our little frog peeking out of a flower, which I think is really sweet. So he's ready to go. He is rather bigger though, so he is gonna have to go on the bottom. I think next to the gardening gloves. Super cute, super springy. <laughs> I love him. And then I don't have very much room left on the bottom, but I thought we could throw another flower in there. And I have some of these like aqua colored flowers from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna pull one off and use that to fill in. I tried to put it back together, but I'm just gonna kinda leave the, kinda put them in there separately. And the bottom tier of that tear tray is ready to go. And now we just need to decorate the top. 
I found this great little house at the Fairy Garden section at Dollar Tree. It's got pink flowers on top and it's actually painted really nicely. So we're just going to kind of stand that one up here in the back of that tiered tray. And I have room for maybe a couple more things. I found that this little garden pick from the Dollar Tree and I love it. It's a little metal watering can. It's so cute. And it's on a little stake, but I thought we could just wiggle that and pop it off. And it was super easy, as you can see. Isn't that adorable? I love it, the metal like that. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And it's the perfect size for the top of my tear tray here. Now I do have like just a little bit of room left there, but I thought we could decorate it a little bit. So I'm going to use just some of this reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, kind of fill in that shelf and any like open areas. I can just kind of use that as filler. That looks really springy. Totally kind of goes with the garden vibe. And I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom as well, just to fill that in. And then I do still have that little bit of space there. And I found the cutest little wood flower pots at the Dollar Tree in the garden section. How cute are these? I thought about painting them, but I thought they kind of looked really cute wood. So I'm just going to toss a couple of them in there. I'm going to use the two smaller ones and just kind of throw them about like pots that haven't been quite used yet. And that's it. Easy peasy, just a tiny little tear tray with some more spring DIYs and finds. And I think this is going to go nicely with everything else that we've made today. Now, I told you I was going to update the color of the frog. I decided I wanted it to be more of that salmon color. And so I just actually distressed the leaves with my color I was using. And that helped tie it in together. And this is how it turned out, our little spring tear tray. And I'm totally loving that frog. What do you think? If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps my videos here on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. I'd also like to take a moment to let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks as well. And I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to the spring DIY crafting. Let's DIY a wall succulent garden using one of these boxes I got on clearance after Christmas at the Target dollar spot. If you weren't as lucky to find these, they have them every year it seems. Um, you could also use like the smaller version available at Dollar Tree or you could get the individual boxes at the Dollar Tree and just glue them together and any pattern like this you wish, like the three by two. And we're gonna fill them with succulent. So. I'm just going to kind of use whatever floral foam I have left over from other projects from the Dollar Tree to try to fill this up. Um, it doesn't have to be filled up all the way, but I'm going to need enough foam in there to be able to put the succulents in. And so I'm just going to kind of piece together <laughs> the pieces that I have. You're not going to be able to see them, so it's not going to matter if it looks like a hot mess in there. And then I gathered all my succulents I've used in previous DIYs or that I had laying around from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to make a succulent wall garden. Now, since it's going to be hanging on the wall, I don't want these falling out. So just securing all of the foam to the back of the box. And then we can start filling this with succulents. Now I have like succulents in pots from the Dollar Tree. I have the succulent stems. I have some that are in like glass sand jars. I have like, basically I went and grabbed all my succulents. I always save them after DIYs or tear trays and stuff like that. So this is a great use for them. Now, since it's going to hang on the wall, I need a hanger. And so I'm going to use one of these good, um, these are the sawtooth hangers that have the nails already attached. My absolute favorite. Um, I think I got these at, I don't know, Home Depot or Walmart. Probably need to pick some more up because they're so easy. Just nail it right in there. And now we have a hanging shelf. The Christmas trees part is on the top of the sign, luckily, so I don't have to worry about painting the sides or anything like that. You're not going to be able to see it when I hang this up on the wall. 
Now, these blue ones, the blue succulents from the Dollar Tree are my favorite. The stems are a little too long, so I'm just cutting those down with some floral scissors from the Dollar Tree, kind of spreading those out. But I do want like a variety of colors, so I'm gonna mix like yellows, browns, greens. I'm gonna try to make it as colorful as I can for spring. I kind of want them to look like flowers, but a different kind of a flower thing. Now, if you wanted to get real ambitious, you could do this with real succulents. And that would be great for like a spring porch DIY or patio. That'd be so cute. So this is about the level of plant that I can keep alive, which I can't keep any plant alive. Now, some of these didn't have stems, so I'm just kind of mixing and matching and we're gonna make this work one way or another. I want like at least two in each box. We can fill in the rest of that later, but I want the box to be as full as I can. And I really love the variety of the succulents and the different colors. Just for a little variety, I'm gonna put three in that one. And just waiting for the glue to dry on this stem, we can put that in there. Some of these succulents I've had forever. I had to glue them back together just because they were falling apart. And then to cover up all the mess that you can see, I'm just gonna use some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, just hot gluing that to the foam. That is exposed and that's gonna give it a beautiful finished look for our little wall succulent garden. Isn't this cute? This was so fun to put together and I just love how it turned out. Just making sure I have enough. I don't wanna see any of the foam. And I think I got it pretty full, what do you think? And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for spring. I did a display at my entryway and this was hanging front and center above my console table. Okay, are you ready for another spring DIY? I thought we could use these adorable little chunky, I guess they're called breadboards um, from the Dollar Tree and three of the little um, Dollar Tree wood signs and a plunger handle. And I thought we could build a toolbox that we could fill with flowers for spring. I've seen some really pretty flowers in toolboxes and I thought, you know, that'd be really kind of fun to try to make. But I've actually seen these for sale at the Target Dollar Spot since I made this. Um, so you could cheat, I guess, but it was really kind of fun to put this together. Now the plunger handle is a great dowel for $1.25. The only challenging part is getting that sticky sticker off. So I'm just gonna use some heat and a blade and we're just gonna scrape that off. Now, since all of this is gonna be raw wood, you could like stain this. Probably do it now if you're gonna stain it or use Antique Wax by Waverly. I'm gonna paint mine or you could leave it natural wood. It's really pretty. But that is the advantage of using all of this real wood stuff. And I love how much wood stuff they have at the Crafter Square anymore. They're really bringing it for us crafters and I appreciate it. Dollar Tree, I see ya. So I'm just gonna remove the hangers from these three signs. They make those signs in two different sizes. I think that this is the smaller one. It's a perfect size for this DIY. I need one for the bottom and then one for each side. I'm just going to stand the little breadboards up like that and it's gonna make the perfect sides for a little toolbox. Now I'm just using Gorilla Glue hot glue. I find that it works really good for wood. Um, you could always use wood glue if you'd like, or you could even nail or screw this together if you wanted yours to be really heavy duty. But we're just gonna use hot glue here. And so I just try to keep that as square as I can. And just trying to clean up this second one we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side and can you kind of see how it's coming together these are like the sides of the toolbox and then I'm going to put another sign on the front and the back and the plunger handle is gonna be the handle for the toolbox it's kind of a small one but it was perfect for what I needed in my entryway so I'm just kind of making sure everything looks square and then we can go ahead and start attaching the side. Now it's not quite as long as the sides of that breadboard. Um, just trying to decide exactly where I want it. It's okay if there's a little gap. 
um, at the bottom because I'm not going to be putting any dirt or anything in there. If you were, you would probably want it to be a little bit more secure there. But I'm just going to hot glue that to this breadboard side and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other. I'm not going to worry about the holes in this side. It's just going to add a little bit more character to the toolbox. And if you wanted, you could even probably put nails in those. So that looks pretty good. So now once the glue dries, we can just flip this over and do the same thing on the other side with that third assign. Now I discovered it'd probably be easier just to put the hot glue on the sides of the breadboard, but don't do like I did, because I put way too much. I forgot that it was taller. <laughs> so I'm just trying to clean that up while this is drying. And we have pretty much the main structure of the toolbox built like that. Now it is time for the handle. I'm going to use the plunger handle. And um, the only thing I'm gonna need to do is figure out how long it needs to be. Now, if I were smart, I would measure, but you know, I never measure. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'll just put this on here. I'll just draw a line with my pen. I'm gonna take it to my saw. I'm gonna cut it. It's gonna be perfect. But I should have measured because look, it was a little bit too short. Now, if I wanted to use screws on the end, um, I could have probably made it work, but I just cut off another sliver of that. And we're just gonna patch it and pretend like I measured. <laughs> too busy crafting to measure, you know? So once I get it painted, you'll never know that I did that. So I'm gonna try it on now to see if it fits. And it fits like a glove. Now I do want that to be glued in, so I'm gonna take it out and just put a dot of hot glue on each side and put it back in there before the hot glue melt or sets up. And there is our little toolbox for flowers. My plan is to fill this with tulips for spring. And I think it looks really pretty. I told you guys before that I was gonna paint it. I'm gonna display this on a blue table in my entryway. So I'm gonna do ivory. Um, and kind of make it look coastal and distressed in the process. And hey, I have a plunger laying around, so I might as well use it. It works great for holding paint. <laughs> so we're gonna use just ivory, acrylic paint, and a brush. Basically, I'm gonna paint anything that's gonna be visible, the handles, the sides, even like the tops of uh, the signs there on the sides, anything that you're gonna be able to see. But otherwise, I'm not gonna paint the inside and stuff like that, because why paint it if you're not gonna be able to see it? So just painting this all over. And again, I think this would be really pretty if you um, if you wanted to stain it some or something like that too, because you'd bring out all that beautiful wood grain in the wood as well. Just kind of doing a rough and dirty coastal coat. It's okay if some of the wood shows because I'm gonna distress it anyway, you know me. So just making sure I have a pretty good coverage. I also sanded down a little bit just because the breadboard um, was cut a little rough and the signs were cut a little rough in some areas. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. And I like to sand to distress anyway, so we're just gonna kind of sand all over. Until it looks a little bit cleaner. And it also gives it a nice light distress on that paint. Now I do wanna distress it further. So I'm also gonna use some Antique Wax by Waverly and like a little chippy brush from the Dollar Tree and just working in one direction. I'm gonna distress, going over with a baby wipe to kind of remove the excess. I just want a light distress, especially around like the edges, kind of any details. That really gives me that coastal vibe or feel. To the ivory, if you feel like you use too much, you can always go back with your original color and distress it some more. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing on each side of our toolbox. Now I'm gonna use um, 
fake flowers for this, so I'm going to use a floral foam inside. Um, I found some really beautiful tulips at the Target Dollar Spot, and I thought they'd be perfect for this. So using some Dollar Tree foam, we're going to try to fill this up. It was a little bit bigger than my phone, but that's okay. We will just kind of piece this together with one of the skinnier blocks, just cutting that down to size. We're gonna make this work. I love this floral foam from the Dollar Tree because it's so easy to cut. And you know, you can make about anything with it. I've even made buoys <laughs> out of this floral foam just because it's so easy to carve. Okay, I thought this would be a good time to use some reindeer moss um, to line the top of it. That way I don't have to go back and try to fill um, this in after I put the tulips in there. So just kind of doing a layer of reindeer moss all over. This older gentleman at the Dollar Tree had to tell me a joke when I bought my reindeer moss there the other day. He said, do you know how fast those reindeer are? We have to like try to catch those to get the moss off of them. I gave him a cute little ha ha. <laughs> Now, these are the tulips that I found at the Target Dollar Spot. I love the colors, and I think they're going to be perfect. I love that there's blue ones, and they, they're they prettier than anything that I've seen at the Dollar Tree because I've never really seen, like, a pretty tulip at the Dollar Tree. Um, post in the comments below if you have. Maybe I've just been unlucky. But I really wanted tulips for this. I thought that would be perfect. So I'm just kind of trying to space them out evenly alternating the colors up like that now I didn't want it to look like too symmetrical so the other ones I'm going to kind of go in and try to like um, put them in the gaps in between the ones on the other row the back row just for a little variety so about halfway in between I'm going to put one just to stagger them a little bit Just kind of mixing the colors up. So I'm going to use like one less on this side because I did that. But I like the variety of it. And that's it. Our little spring toolbox filled with tulips. I love this DIY for spring and I hope you do too. Now I'm just putting a little bit more reindeer moss in there just to make it look super full. And this is how it turned out. Isn't it pretty? I also used like a lot of plants that I had from the Dollar Tree and Target and kind of did a lot of plants in my entryway as well. Okay, next DIY. This is a shelf I got at the Target Dollar Spot for $5. You can kind of work with whatever you have. The thing I liked about this is that it was simple and it had the little pegs that I want to use for this DIY. It's also got a shelf so I can put some springy stuff up there as well. And it's this beautiful raw wood, but I wanted to kind of coordinate with that like toolbox that we just made. And so we're going to paint it ivory. So just using ivory acrylic, we're going to go over this entire shelf and paint it. Now, if you were, if you couldn't find this and you wanted to build it, I think it would be really easy. You could use like two pieces of craft wood from the Dollar Tree gluing or screwing those together just in an L shape and then you could use little dowels for the pegs it'd be super easy to recreate but if you can find it for five dollars um I would say invest <laughs> and so I'm just going over the top of the shelf anywhere you're going to be able to see then I'm going to go over and sand it a little bit as well just to kind of rough it up and give it that coastal feel again. Basically, I want like the same distressing on this one that we did on the first one. So again, chippy brush, Antique Wax by Waverly. I like to try to work in one direction, lightly distressing, sometimes heavily distressing, but if you use a baby wipe and you're quick, you can kind of rub that all in and forgive any errors and you can always go back in with your original color of paint and distress as well 
going to use that to distress all over to kind of give it a uniform coastal appearance. And even though you're probably not going to be able to see it, I'm going to go ahead and do the top of the shelf as well, in case, you know, I ever use the shelf somewhere where you might be able to see it up there as well. And what I wanted to do with this is I thought I could put some plants and like a, I found this great little spring artwork at the do Target dollar spot, but I wanted to look like I had flowers being dried um, hanging from the pegs. And so this is the greenery that I found from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to kind of mix up different colors, purples, yellows, but I love this like frosty look um, to the leaves. I think that kind of makes them look like they're dried out. And then to look at, make them look like they're tied up, I am just going to go with um, jute twine from the Dollar Tree and wind that around them. That's also going to serve as a hanger and then cut off the end um, using some wire um, scissors trying to get through that. That was kind of tough. And making it a little longer than it needs to be. And then I'm just going to make a little loop so I can have a hanger and then wrap that around and I'm gonna tie that off. That way it's gonna look like I'm drying flowers on the wall. I thought that would look really fun for spring. And these little flowers from the Dollar Tree is definitely a cheap economical way to get that look. So that is how I have it all tied up. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the other one. Using, I'm just using that real tiny twine from the Dollar Tree. You could always use something thicker and you might not have to go around as many times, but then making a loop and tying that off. Super easy. And then just removing the end. I, I found that my floral scissors didn't work as well as like my heavy KitchenAid scissors on that stem. And then we're going to do the same thing here with a flower at number three, since we had three pegs on there. Just trying to make them all about the same height with their little loops. Tying and trimming and cutting off the stem. Couldn't be any easier. And this turned out so cute. So this is how it looks in my entryway. Our little flowers being dried on the wall. Super cute. Now this isn't a DIY, but this is a cute little spring sign that I found at the Target Dollar Spot. And I love it because it had a special message for me because my son used to always love dandelions and be like, flowers, look at all the flowers when they would bloom back when we lived in the Midwest. So I thought that was a really funny saying, may all your weeds be wildflowers. I'm gonna use that up on that little shelf that we just made along with um, some plants that I got uh, at the Target Dollar Spot as well. This isn't a DIY either, but I thought I would just show it to you. Um, I got this at the Target Dollar Spot and I'm gonna use this for that decor as well. It's a beautiful blue and ivory um, birdhouse. I don't really like the look of the chain on it though, so I'm just going to remove that. I, I don't really have a bird or anything to put in this, so I'm just gonna use some Spanish moss, kind of fill that up, kind of make it look like there's a bird nest in there and then just replace the little hanging chain on the top. And I thought this would go great with all of these DIYs that I'm making for spring for my entryway. So just tucking that in there. It's okay if a little bit sticks out. Just gonna make it look super cute. And how cute is that birdhouse? I love the Target Dollar Spot when I can actually find stuff. Mine has been lacking lately. They have all the Valentine's Day stuff now when it's a little too late. <laughs> so I'm just going to replace that hanger at the top with some of this thicker twine. This is the kind that you get at Walmart. And I'm just going to tie a simple little loop. I thought that looked a little bit more like coastal vibes than a chain. A little prettier. And then I'm just going to burn off the fuzzies with a lighter. Because sometimes that twine from Walmart is pretty rough. Not really counting this as a DIY, but I thought I would show you because you're going to see it here. I also thrift flipped that great cathedral window that you can kind of see behind it. I got that at Goodwill. So pretty. Okay, the next step, we're going to use a Dollar Tree calendar. And then I got a wood slice sign at Goodwill. Somebody had done like a wood carving on it. And 
I just have to remove the sticker. Um, I went ahead and started painting on there because there was a name on there. But basically, I want to cover up any of the writing and etching that was on here. So I'll have a nice flat surface to use the calendar page to make a spring wall hanging. Um, I did have to use a little spackle because they did like kind of carve their initials in the back. But I have the perfect calendar page for this. Look at this cute little spring bicycle. I think it's going to fit on there perfectly. We're not going to do the words or anything. We're just going to go with the bike. I'm just doing a rough sketch around that first. And then cutting it inside that kind of where I think it's going to need to be. It's not a perfect oval, but we can always like kind of patch the bottom in. Um, but I think I did a pretty good job of cutting that down to size. And isn't that a beautiful print for spring? I love using Dollar Tree calendars. Now I didn't want like some of it to be white behind it and it to look different because you know the calendar pages from the Dollar Tree are thin. So I just went ahead with white acrylic and just going to go over the entire thing. If you didn't have writing on there or etching, you probably wouldn't need to do that step. And then I'm going to attach a hanger to the back leaving the little, you know, pretty carving on the back as well. And to attach the calendar page to the wood slice, we're just going to use a thin layer of Mod Podge. Couldn't be any easier. And I love bicycles for spring. We're going to have another bicycle here in a minute. I always think that's so fun for spring. And the blue bicycle goes with my decor, pink flowers, perfect color combination just using uh, my little roller for my Cricut to get that down smooth and then I'm going to go over it with another coat of Mod Podge and give that a quick dry. Now as you can see on the bottom my image um, was not quite long enough to get in a complete oval because I was trying to cut off the words so to patch that little area I thought we could just do a very quick easy little expo using Dollar Tree ribbon and the burlap. I got this cute little pastel plaid I thought that'd be cute as well and then I thought maybe you know actually some burlap just cutting it in half to make it a little thinner and kind of mixing that up sandwiching that in between and just using a zip tie and we're gonna have a super easy little expo couldn't be easier and it's gonna be the perfect thing down here I also thought we could bring in some of those little pink flowers that you see there to kind of decorate that as well just gluing that down to the middle. Super cute. And I think it kind of needed a bow or something as well. Then I decided that, you know, my expo was probably way too big. So just going to trim it down now. It's better to make it too big and you can trim it than making it too small, I guess. Just kind of doing all the cuts at an angle, trying to arrange it until it looks good. And then these little pink flowers, I love these. They're called wild flowers. I thought these would be perfect. They're going to kind of coordinate with the pink flowers in the basket of that bicycle. We're just going to kind of work them into our little expo. And this was such an easy DIY and it looks so pretty for spring. I think that's the perfect dose of color and flowers. Super cute. Now, you know, I have to distress it just because I distress everything. <laughs> so I'm using a chippy brush and some ivory paint and distressing it. I find that it made it look less like paper and more like a hand painting. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for spring. It's so pretty. And I actually just hung a Dollar Tree pink flower next to it just for fun. Now, this is a welcome spring sign from the Dollar Tree. And honestly, it's perfect. I'm just going to make a frame with some of this um, brown rope from the Dollar Tree. Just because I like a little bit of a thicker sign. And the Dollar Tree signs are kind of thin and cheap. And I think the rope's going to go well with spring. So that's what we're going to do. I love the little blue truck on there. I love that it says welcome spring. And it's got the, like the pink flowers. It's already got a hanger on it. So these are going to be really quick, easy spring DIYs. 
on the rest of the way out, just to let you know, super easy. <laughs> no building anything like a toolbox. So using that same rope, we're gonna go all the way around here, just doing a thin bead of hot glue. And I love framing things out with rope. I just did this on my other spring video with the wood rounds. And finishing it off here and securing the corner. Now, you know I don't like glitter that much, and so I'm gonna try to tone it down with the little matte Mod Podge just to make me feel better. And then I don't really like the hanger the way it was on there because I find that the, the Dollar Tree signs don't hang very flat to the wall. I like to tie them off in front. So just using some Dollar Tree twine, I'm just gonna replace it. Tying the knots in front so it will hang nice and flat against my wall. And I don't know, this was so easy. I don't know if I would even consider this a DIY. I guess it is, because we did add a rope border. And then I'm just gonna go around with my lighter and burn off all the fuzzies. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for spring. Loving the colors for spring, so pretty. And I love that little blue truck, how cute is that? Okay, next up, we're gonna use one of these little pink purses, spring purses from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make like a little wreath basket out of this. I love the fact that it kind of looks like, kind of like a seagrass material, but it's pink. Just removing the little flower that's on there, trying not to cause any damage. I'm also going to remove the straps because I don't want it to look like a purse. I want it to look like a basket hanging on the wall. Now I'm gonna remove the tag. And the only thing I don't like is see how flat it is. I'm like, that's not gonna look very good. I want a way to open it up. So I thought if I use some of these Dollar Tree rulers, I could add just a little bit of structure to the side to make it like, kind of stay open if you know what I mean. So I'm just kind of measuring to see how tall I need that. And I'm gonna cut that ruler down into two pieces, one for each side. Then using hot glue, I'm gonna go in and secure that to the sides. It's gonna make this purse stay open, more like a little basket that we can fill with flowers for spring. Now, this part gluing it in was a little tricky. I, I definitely had to hold it in place until it was dry, but it definitely gave me more shape to the basket for sure. Now I'm gonna fill the inside of the basket with just some floral foam from the Dollar Tree just cutting it down to size. Didn't need it to be quite as big as it is. Something that we can arrange Dollar Tree flowers in to decorate that. I'm gonna also use some of that reindeer moss to cover that up so you don't see any of the floral foam. Super easy, and then for a handle, um, I still need a handle to hang it with. I'm using just some Dollar Tree rope. This is the um, same rope that we used to frame the sign. And just gluing it to the ruler so the rulers actually came in handy. And that's gonna make the perfect hanger to hang it on the wall. The next step is, is that we wanna fill this in with flowers for spring. So I really kind of wanted to go with smaller flowers. I found these Larkspur, they're a beautiful color of blue. And I'm just gonna start cutting these apart and arranging these. I want like lots of colors. I want it to look kind of like wildflowers, like somebody has been out picking flowers for spring. I really like those. Those are probably my favorite ones that I used in that. I love how they have the little sprigs coming out of them. And then we're just gonna keep a building these are kind of um, a more fall color, but I kind of wanted to see how it looked with like the yellow flowers. So this is probably the most time consuming part of this project is just arranging your flowers, trying to find what colors like look good together. Definitely wanted to bring in some of the pink. Sometimes I struggle to find the small flowers like this at the Dollar Tree, but I always try to pick them up when I see them because they work great for smaller DIYs like this one. So we're trying just about anything I can find in my flower stash that looks springy. 
I decided to go back and replace those original yellow ones with these because I thought they looked really beautiful for spring. And then I'm also going to add some Dollar Tree greenery just to give it a little bit more filler. And it's definitely looking full. I think it's definitely looking springy. And I love the little pink basket as well. Super cute and super inexpensive. I told you we were gonna have another bicycle. This is actually a Christmas ornament that I got on clearance at the Target dollar spot. And it's a little blue bicycle, so it's gonna be the perfect touch. I know this one's gonna be kind of a hard to match, but I kind of wanted to show you how I used it on there because I thought it would be cute. And I put this away just for spring and just kind of putting the little pedal of the bicycle in there. I always love to get Christmas ornaments on clearance, especially stuff like this that you can use for any season. And you know, my Dollar Tree's had all their ornaments on clearance this year as well. And this is how it turned out. Our little basket full of wildflowers for spring with a little rope handle and finished off with a little blue bicycle hanging on the same wall as that other bicycle print. So, okay, next DIY, we're gonna use one of these wood flowers from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and this beautiful bandana that I found at the Dollar Tree. You guys know that I'm always searching for different fabrics to use at the Dollar Tree. So the bandana is perfect for this, perfect size. Now it was kind of thin and I didn't really want the wood to show through. That's the only reason that I painted that white first, but that's why I did it. And then I'm gonna go over the whole thing with a thick layer of matte Mod Podge. And then we're just gonna lay this beautiful bandana on it. I want it to be like a flower print flower, if you will. And I'm just using my brayer to roll that down um, and kind of cutting off the excess. I kind of want to cut off like the pink border. I only want that beautiful floral print going over the top of it with more Mod Podge to make sure it's good and secure. And you could cut this down to size first if you wanted to. I'm cutting mine after I let it dry. I'm just using some fabric scissors and trying to get as close to the edges as possible. I thought that if I cut it before, it was gonna be really hard to get it all lined up perfectly on there. I don't want any of the wood showing from the original sign. So just really sharp scissors and just cutting just as close as you can to the edge. And I love the colors on this fabric. And they have some different spring fabrics as well. I used one the other day with the uh, pink and the blues. That would be really pretty as well. But always check your bandanas and scarves and stuff like that too. Sometimes the scarves are too skinny, but just using my sanding block to kind of finish off the edges and get any kind of strings off. Then I just need um, some burlap for the center of the flower. So I just had a scrap piece of burlap sitting around just using the bottom of a bucket just because I needed a circle to cut out a perfect little circle. And we're just gonna cut that out for the middle of our flower. Now, the only problem with that is the burlap. You can see through it, of course, and you can kind of see that print through it. So. I do have some white fabric from the Dollar Tree. You can always double up your burlap as well. But what I'm gonna do is just Mod Podge that scrap fabric onto the back. That way you won't be able to see it through. Covering the burlap with some Mod Podge as well. Drying that and then we'll just cut that circle out again. That way I'll have a beautiful burlap circle from the middle of my flower. But you won't be able to see that pattern through there. It's just gonna make it look a little bit more professional. Cutting a round circle is just the challenging part. <laughs> so just kind of lining that up in the center of the flower and hot gluing that on. Super cute. I just thought it needed a center to the flower, something to break it up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna poke a hole through the fabric and use some Dollar Tree twine to make a new hanger. I told you these were gonna be easy, right? And how cute is that little spring DIY? I love it so far. Okay, I wanted to frame it out though, you know, just because Dollar Tree Thin Signs drives me crazy. I'm just using that thick twine from Walmart and hot glue and we are just gonna border it out. I thought that would be a nice touch. It's gonna kind of go with the rope border on 
that truck sign that we did and it's going to kind of match that burlap in the middle just give it a little finished edge this step though totally optional now i think they have maybe this shape in the galvanized metal as well um, and you could use that too if you can't find the wood one So it's all framed out, and this is how it looks on my wall. I have it hanging next to that little truck sign underneath a flower, and I love the colors in that bandana. Aren't they pretty? Okay, next find, Target Dollar Spot, a blue watering can. How cute is this watering can? It's perfect for my coastal decor, and I thought we could just fill it with flowers for spring, and I love the fact that it's made out of metal. Now I'm trying to figure out how I can use like one of these little round floral foams from the Dollar Tree. I did have to put a little wood block in there to kind of get it tall enough to sit up there and then just use some reindeer moss on top and we can start filling this water can for flowers. Now if you watch my spring DIY the other day, I did something similar with the Dollar Tree watering can. It's plastic and so kind of had to rough that one up to make it look a little bit weathered, less like plastic. Um, but this metal one, perfect. Love it for spring. Just trying to mix up colors, trying to do some contrasting colors. So pinks and whites and like aqua colors I thought would be really pretty in this. And just cutting these apart, alternating them in there, just putting those down into the floral foam. Couldn't be any easier. And it's all removable. You can always use this watering can for its original and intent before um after you're done with your diy <laughs> and i thought some of this larkspur would be really pretty in there as well that we used on the basket um i really love the long wispy feel of that one and it's gonna tie it into those flowers on the wall and then i had a snail on one side but i kind of wanted like a flowery spring thing and so I thought we could just use one of these little stickers from the Dollar Tree, a little pink flower. And put that on the front of our watering can. And we have another easy spring DIY for you. And this is how it looks. Um, I just displayed it on a shelf here so that you could see it. And I think it's so cute and fun. Okay, the next two DIYs here, I'm going to use one of these little hanging spring signs from the Dollar Tree and then two of these little signs from just home decor at the Dollar Tree. I chose those because they had the pink floral print around the edges and I thought we could keep that. I love that. Now, at first I was going to do two watering cans, but I decided to mix it up and use one watering can and one pink flower just to kind of break it up a little bit. Now, there was like an oval on each sign that says choose your dreams. And so I don't want any of that oval to be visible. So I'm just going to use some scrap burlap and um, kind of cover the inside of it with the burlap just to cover that white part up. And then we can layer the Dollar Tree wood signs on top of that. So easy peasy. We're just going to Mod Podge this burlap down to the sign. I love the pink flower print on the sides and around the edges. Just Mod Podging that down, giving that a quick dry, and then we can attach that Dollar Tree sign. It's pink. It's so cute. Um, but I thought I might as well cut out burlap for the second one um, while I have it. That way they can make them symmetrical and kind of the same size. So I just cut out a second one. And then we're just going to Mod Podge that on there. I didn't worry about painting over the words. I don't think you're going to be able to see the words at all with those signs on top of it. Just trying to cover up that oval part. And this also adds just a little bit of texture. And, you know, we use burlap on that flower. So it kind of ties it in with that as well. Now, you know, I don't really like um, glitter for most projects. And Dollar Tree loves their glitter. So just toning it down a little bit with some matte Mod Podge. Just my personal preference. But these are really cute and they're the perfect size i think for these little signs can kind of group these together and an arrangement on my wall and i'm just going to go ahead and attach the little watering can with hot glue it's okay if it overlaps the sides a little bit it gives it a little bit more character 
And then on the other one, I'm gonna do a pink flower, trying to decide which way it looks best. I think it looks better that way. And hot gluing that one down. And we have some more spring signs for the wall. Gonna hang these with the basket, that flower that we made, the little bike sign, all of this together. And a nice little display for spring. But you could also use these for a tear tray. That'd be super cute. And they're just the right size for that. Hopefully you got some fun spring crafting inspiration today. I know everyone is in a hurry for spring to be here and you've made it all the way to the final reveal. So let me show you how all of these spring DIYs turned out. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment your favorite DIY below and please subscribe. Enjoy. Just close your eyes and let them rest. I know it's hard to fall asleep, but do your best Cause there's a place that I go to When I want to hide from all the shades of blue Cause at times I think of leaving My mind takes me back to fall when the snow begins to sing at night to warm I'm counting years as they go by Now all the lilies are gone and aces brought to life Cause at times I think I'm leaving My mind takes me back to fall When the snow begins to sink Just close your eyes and let them rest I know it's hard to fall asleep but do your best Cause there's a place that I go to When I want to hide from all the shades of blue Cause at times I think of leaving
Just feel the wind If you look close You see the lilies dance And how they slowly grow I'm counting years As they go Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. And I also want to say thank you and a special shout out to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, I am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Vernon Noctigal, Nancy Warner, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Whitney Harrison, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Tina Kane, and Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. If you'd like more DIY videos, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.